the Johnson Wax Program with Faber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coats present Faber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by Martha Tilton and the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with It's High Time. and Molly will be with us in just a minute. You know, we hear a lot about freedom and democracy these days. It's true that we take a lot of our present liberty for granted. Take this free competitive system of business, for instance. It has turned loose a great deal of inventive intelligence, of which you and I get the benefit in greater everyday comfort and conveniences and more attractive living. For example, the makers of Johnson's Wax didn't stop when they had perfected the original Johnson's Wax the famous polish that's kept floors beautiful for over 50 years. No, indeed. They went right on developing other useful products. An easy-to-use polish for linoleum floors, Johnson self-polishing glow coat, then an amazing auto polish, Car New, that cleans and wax polishes in one application. Then cream wax for furniture and woodwork. And just recently, an extraordinary product in the paint field, an enamel that actually has wax mixed right in it and gives a superbly beautiful finish that's easy to clean. The name of this product is Johnson's Wax Onamel, and dealers everywhere are now offering it in 19 stunning colors. Perhaps you'd like to ask your dealer about it. This is the time of year when maple leaves and football forecasters begin to turn yellow. There's a nip in the air in Wistful Vista, and our hero thinks a fire in the fireplace will be pretty dandy. So here, with papers and kindling and matches and a bucket of kerosene and not enough accident insurance, we find that unintentional arsonist and his watchful wife, Fibber McGee and Molly. That ought to do it. Hand me that bucket of kerosene, Molly. I will not. Huh? You've got enough paper and kindling in there to barbecue an elephant. McGee, don't pour that on there. Don't, <laughs> now. Oh, Molly, don't be such a scaredy cat. Here, watch. Oh, dear. Uh, when you get through starting that fire, McGee, run downtown and get me some dynamite. Huh? I want to open a can of sardines for lunch. <laughs> What's a few drops of kerosene? Where's the matches? Oh, here they are. I'll have a roaring fire in here in no time at all. Yes, a roaring fire and a howling insurance adjuster. <laughs> McGee, for the last time, please don't do Better that. step back a little, Molly. It may flare up a little bit at first. Oh. Wow! <laughs> McGee! Hey. Look out! Put that screen in front of us. Hey, don't worry. I got it under control. Hand me my coat. <laughs> the rug's on fire. Here, here. Beat it. Beat it where? Beat out the fire, foolish. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Should have used safety matches to start it with. <laughs> And kitchen matches make too big of a flame. <laughs> there. It's okay, Molly. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's fine. The house full of smoke, the rug all scorched, and you've only got one eyebrow left. Well, how did I know that was... Oh, dear. Quick, wipe the soot off your face, McGee. You look like an end man. You look like a mammy yourself, Mommy. <laughs> Come in. Heavenly days, it's Mayor Latrivia. <laughs> Come in, Your Honor. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Good day, McGee. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? I just... <laughs> <laughs> what goes on? Fumigating? And no, the, uh, the fireplace backfired, Mr. Mayor. Won't you have a chair? <clears throat> Thank you, no. Just stopped in on a matter of business. Mr. McGee, you're a public-spirited citizen. I'm sure you'd be glad to give the city the benefit of your executive experience. Why, certainly, Your Honor. What do you want me to do, run for your job next year? Why, Chuck, I'll be glad to. All i got to do is profit by the mistakes you've made, and I'll sure... McGee! Won't... <laughs> Let the mayor talk. Huh? Oh. Mr. McGee, 
The office of mayor of Wispo Vista is not under discussion. Oh, you think not? If you'd hear what people are saying about Mickey. the way... Mickey! <laughs> Let the mayor talk. Okay. Go ahead, Trivial. <clears throat> To be brief, McGee, one of our officials is making a nationwide survey and will be out of the city for a week or ten days. His office is too valuable and important to remain vacant during that time. I want you to fill the vacancy pro tem. Oh, what job is it, Mr. Mayor? Fire commissioner. <laughs> well, Bud, you've come to the right man. With my experience in fire prevention... <laughs> Pardon me, it's the smoke. <laughs> Very well, then, we'll consider it settled. Here's a badge, and here's your official appointment. Mr. Mayor, I accept with pleasure. And I must say that for a city like our Wistful Vista, a man like me is none too good for it. I think so, too. Thank you, Mr. McGee. I'll inform the city council that the office has been filled pro tem. Uh, uh, what does pro tem mean? That's a Latin phrase meaning try and keep it. Thank you, and good day. <laughs> Hot dog. Imagine me, Molly. Fire commissioner. The first thing I'm going to do is call a meeting of the Chamber of Commerce this afternoon and give them a talk on fire prevention. Yes, and if they ask how you scorched your eyebrow, tell them you were cleaning the fireplace and didn't know it was loaded. <laughs> now, let's see. I better have the secretary of the chamber telephone all the members. We get... It's probably for me, Molly. Hello? Fire commissioner McGee speaking. Who? Oh. Uh, oh, hi, Roscoe. Sure. Okay, Roscoe. I'm calling a special meeting of the chamber for 2.30 this afternoon. Can you be there, Roscoe? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, you betcha, Roscoe. I'll see you there. Okay. I'm glad you called, Roscoe. Hey, Molly. Yes? Do I know anybody named Roscoe? <laughs> well, you do now. Oh, these constituents. <laughs> Always coming around to ask us city officials for a favor. Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. DePopolis. Oh, hi, Nick. Hello, Cupid. Hello, Fizzer. What is this unfounded roommate I'm hearing about you being annoyed at the pro-temporary fire commissionary? <laughs> well, it's true, Mr. DePopolis. He's hot stuff and he's got a badge to prove it. <laughs> Molly, remind me to get you some throat tablets. What? You're developing a bad scoff. <laughs> Commissioner. What was you saying, Nick? What I was about to say before I was so rudely interrupted, he's been in my restaurant since we are having quite a fire hizzard. Has it? I'll say we have. <laughs> what is the fire hazard in your restaurant, Nick? Well, when we are getting an order for a charcoal grill for the steakhouse... Oh, no, you mean porterhouse steak. Eh? It's the same thing, only topper. <laughs> Every time the cook is charcoal grilling it, the bacon grease in the frying pan is catching itself into a big flame of fire. And all we can do is stand there, hopeless. <laughs> Haven't you got a fire extinguisher? Sure. But every time we squirt it on the frying pan, it is making the steak taste very peculiar. <laughs> Well, look, Mr. DePopolis, your restaurant specializes in charcoal grilled steaks and chops, doesn't it? Oh, smertily. Just like Mother used to make Papa mad by cooking them the same way. <laughs> why, Cupid? Well, it's a little drastic, maybe, but uh, why don't you get yourself a charcoal broiler? Well, for scream's sake. I never thought of that. Thank you. <laughs> This is a great day for Wistful Vista. Is it? It surely is. <laughs> Why, when the citizens of this community, this little city of homes and schools and churches, realize that their safety and well-being are now in the hands of Fibber McGee, acting fire commissioner... Oh, stop acting, fire commissioner. <laughs> Sing, boys. <laughs> I used to work up on the levee, waiting for the steamer to go down. Sometimes she was loaded mighty heavy, and sometimes she would run aground. What she wanted to give me for my dinner? Potato cakes to cook and they were leaves. Oh, that's good enough for any sinner, and that's pretty good enough for me. 
tapioca, tapioca. Mammy, won't you let me pick you on the poker? Give me tapioca, 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 tapioca. tapioca. Oh, come on, we'll have a jubilee. Working on the railroad, twenty cents a day. Johnny Parker tuning on the banjo. Oh, me and my, my. Mammy, 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 don't you hear the baby cry? Working on the railroad, never get a pay. Johnny Parker tuning on the banjo. written for the Chamber of Commerce meeting, Commissioner? No, nope. I'll just add limit. I'll start off by saying, ladies and gentlemen of the Chamber of Commerce. Well, that's a snappy opening. And incidentally, Commissioner, I wish you'd report to the Chief of Police about the cop in this neighborhood. He's growing a beard and he looks terrible. Hmm. I've already spoke to the cop about it. Well, what'd you say? I told him to quit bushing around the beach. <laughs> Imagine that. We almost took that out, too. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. I better call the chamber and see how many members they've rounded up. Hand me the phone. Here. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, operator. Give me the whistle, Mr. Chamber. Huh? Oh, is that you, Mert? Oh. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What's that, Mert? Your old man. In the hospital. He shot off his... What? Oh, heavenly days, McGee. What happened? He was in Brooklyn last week and shot off his mouth about the Yankees. <laughs> What's say, Mert? Oh, well, don't matter. Thanks anyway, Mert. Ah, great gal, Mert. I'll bet she just lives for the few moments she talks to me every week. <laughs> you call that living? <laughs> Now, never mind. We'd better get going. A guy in my position owes it to the citizens to be punctual. Oh, you're punctual, all right, dear. Everything we own, we've bought on time. I didn't mean that. Well, congratulations, Viver, old man. So you're the new fire commissioner. Isn't it wonderful, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, shucks. It's nothing that any red-blooded, clean-living American boy couldn't have done. <laughs> well, it's a wonderful opportunity, my boy. You can now serve not only your city, but those people in Racine, Wisconsin, who have done so much for you and me. Okay, Wilcox. Drag it in, but don't drag it out. <laughs> Why, as Fire Commissioner Fibber, you can help prevent fires. And fire is just about the only thing that Johnson's self-polishing glow coat won't protect your linoleum against. Dirt, yes. Dampness, yes. Stains, yes. Scuffs and scratches, yes. But fire, no. So it's you and Johnson's glow coat against destruction, pal. Get in there and fight. And may the best finish finish first. Johnson! 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 Yay, team! Oh. You know, McGee, that man has been seeing too many football games. <laughs> he had me so hopped up, I was tempted to drop back for a quick kick. <laughs> myself. Well, come on, Molly. I don't want to be late for that meeting. Get your hat and your stuff. Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. I'm sorry I ain't got time to talk to you now. I've just been made acting fire commissioner and I'm very busy. What you want? 
Will you tell me a story, please? <laughs> will you? Will you please? Oh, for the here I am, just appointed the fire commissioner with the safety of the whole town in my hand, <laughs> and you wanted me to tell you a story. Well, that's always the way, isn't it, mister? Huh? The more important a man is, the more time he has for little acts of kindness, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I ever tell you about the time I was captured by the Indians? In Cleveland? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the Cleveland Indians. These were Shawnee. Oh, gee, Chinese Indians. Oh, boy. I didn't say Chinese. I said Shawnee. Shaw, like in George Bernard. He's English, I bet you. Sure he is. He's as English as roast beef. It's what? Roast beef. I'm... I don't care if you are. <laughs> now, you want to hear this story or don't you? No. Oh, sure you do, sis. It's no. Well, sir, one day while wandering through the mountains, walking very carefully on account of the wild animals, men living in the wild, sis, have got to learn to use their beans. You said what? Beans. Oh. Go ahead, mister. I don't like beans. <laughs> well, what happened in the mountains? Please? I found a little kitten. Oh. A little baby mountain lion. Mm. And you know what I named the kitten? Caboodle. <laughs> Kitten Caboodle. <laughs> Why, mister? Well, Caboodle was an old Shawnee Indian word meaning, look, fellas, I found a mountain lion. <laughs> <laughs> ah, them Indians could sure put a lot of meaning into one little word. Well, sis... You said that. Huh? Oh. Well, anyway, sis, years later, I was in the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago, and I happened past the pit where they keep the mountain lion. Oh. And all of a sudden, I had a hunch. I leans over the edge of the pit and hollers, Hey, Capoodle, it's Ugg Tug. Hmm? Ugg Tug. That's a Shawnee word meaning white man found mountain lion. Oh. <laughs> well, sir, the minute that lion heard my voice, he comes bounding to the edge of the pit, sticks out his paw, and rips my shirt right off. Oh. Darn near killed me. It wasn't Capoodle at all. <laughs> Wasn't that an amazing story? <laughs> Mister, the Shawnees haven't got anything on us, I bet you. We're saying a lot in one little word. What you mean, sis? Boy. <laughs> That's what I for you. Next time I tell her a story, I'll keep it to myself. Now listen, Ugg Tug. <laughs> We'd better scram out of the teepee for powwow down at the big lodge. Oh, my gosh. Almost time for the meeting. Well, come on. Let's get going. Martha Tilton singing Easy Street. Easy Street. I'd love to live on Easy Nobody works on Easy Street. Just sit around all day. Just sit and play the horses. Life is sweet. For folks who live on Easy Street. No weekly payments you must need. That makes your hair turn gray. When opportunity comes knocking, you just keep on with your rocking, cause you know your fortune's made. And if the sun makes you perspire, there's a man that you can hire to plant trees so you can have shade on easy street. I'm telling everyone I meet, if I could live on easy street. No job today, so please go away. When opportunity comes knocking, you just keep on with your rocking, cause you know your fortune's made. And if the sun makes you perspire, there's a man that you can hire to plant trees so you can have shade on easy trees. I'm 
Chamber of Commerce, as Acting Fire Commissioner, I want to say that as long as we're all in the same boat, walking along life's pathway together, let us all put our shoulders to the grindstone, and with colors flying, gird up our lions and swanesses, and make Wistful Vista a better, safer place to live in which to live in. Uh, May uh, may I ask a question, Commissioner? Of course, bud. All us public servants welcome comments from the people. What's the question? Is there any penalty for turning in a false alarm? There certainly is. Then I guess you're safe for a while. (laughs) Quiet, please. Quiet order. And if the chameleon who just spoke (laughs) will come to our next fire, we'll be glad to let him mingle with the rest of the silly ashes. (laughs) Yo-ho, McGee. The lady will please address the chair as you who commissioner. <laughs> you have the floor, madam. Well, I've been talking to Mr. Mills sitting next to me here, and he has a complaint to make. He has, eh? Billy, do you mean to sit there with no sleeves in your vest <laughs> and criticize this fire department? Yes, I do, Skimp. <laughs> Take your case. Well, last week I was knocking off some hot licks on my piano, and it caught on fire. Yes? Yeah? That was about 3 p.m., your fire department didn't show up until 6.30. Hmm. Did you call them right away? Oh, do you have to call them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just to show you how wrong Mr. Mills is and how quick our boys do get on the job, I'm going to try an experiment. We're going to turn in an alarm right now and see how long it takes them to get here. Fine, McGee. Mrs. Commissioner McGee, will you please step to the telephone and call the fire department? Certainly. Uh, pardon me, please. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, operator. Uh, give me the Wistful Vista fire department. Oh, is that you, Myrtle? <laughs> no, 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 no. Never mind that. Yeah, get the fire department. Uh, give me the fire department, Myrtle, quick. Hello, fire department. I want to... What? No, this is not the pot of gold. <laughs> I'm calling from the Chamber of Commerce. It's on fire. Hurry. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. And now, if you'll all keep an eye on your watches, we'll see just how long it takes our brave fire laddie. Uh, Mr. To... Commissioner, and may I say a few words while we're waiting? Why, certainly. The chair recognizes Mrs. Uppington, in spite of that funny-looking hat. <laughs> Mrs. Uppington? Commissioner McGee and fellow members of the Whitful Vista Chamber of Commerce. Oh, I'll make it snappy, Abigail. Technically, we're on fire. <laughs> Very well. I merely wish to protest against the unseemly nerve-wracking sounds emitted by our fire department on its way to a conflagration. Such bells and sirens. It's ridiculous. Can't we install some melodious chimes, such as are heard on the good humor truck? <laughs> order, please, order. I'm sorry, Mrs. Uppington. If our firefighting methods are too dead added raucous for your delicate nerves, <laughs> I'll have them take off the sirens and put on a fireman with a food plan, I don't want to set the world on fire. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. And while we're at it, we'll have the police throw away their revolvers and carry water pistols. Does that satisfy you, Uppy? Certainly, Mr. McGee. Well... If a little squirt can run the fire department, it ought to work with the police. <laughs> Please, order. Ladies and gentlemen, in the few seconds we have left, I think it would be fitting to hear from Wistful Vista's poet laureate, Mr. Wallace Wimple. He's composed a little verse in honor of this occasion. Mr. Wimple. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. <laughs> and friends, I have called this little poem The Fire in the Creamery. Our smoke gets in your eyes, cream. <laughs> and it goes. When your restaurant burned down, I had to write this little sonnet in hopes my tablecloth was saved because I figured my income tax upon it. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Wimple. Yes. That's wonderful. Well, it's nothing, Mrs. McGee, really. As long as this meeting is concerned with our fire department, 
I would like to pay tribute to the woman who risked everything she had to test their life-saving equipment. Mrs. Wimple, my wife. Oh. What'd she do, Wimple? Well, when our fire company first got their landing net, they stood on the sidewalk, and my wife stood in the window ten stories overhead. Oh, really? And then at a signal, the long, fearful drop to the net. Time after time. What if she did keep missing the net? <laughs> she would not give up. She persisted until the fireman finally told her to stop. The net was a success. That's why I said... But Mr. Whipple, wasn't she hurt falling ten stories time after time? Oh, she didn't fall. She kept throwing me out. <laughs> Order, please. Order. Now, ladies and gentlemen, hey, quiet, everybody. Listen. Right on top. Uh, they're, they're probably swinging around and back where the fire escapes are. They... Uh-oh. Listen. Why, I could put out this fire with a handful of water just before those guys get here. Pipe down, bud. There's a wise acre that needs plowing under. <laughs> There must be some reason for all this. Wait here, everybody, and I'll be right back with the explanation. Come on, Molly, let's run out and see what's wrong. Yeah. Oh, look, McGee, here they come again. Ah, here comes the fire chief. Uh, hey, chief. Now, yeah, one side there, Commissioner, there's a fire in here. Oh, no, there ain't, bud. This is just a test run. Uh, uh, just checking up. Say, McGee, where's your manners? What manners? Oh, oh. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, Molly, meet Chief Conley, one of my firefighting brothers. Oh, how do you do, I'm sure, brother. How do you do? Hey, what took you so long to get here, Chief? Oh, some dope parked his car in front of the hydrant down at the corner. Oh. We had to ram it out of the way. That's uh, good work, Chief. Nice going, brother. And then we notified the police to haul it away. Great stuff, Chief. Serves him right. Whose car was it? Yours. You mean... Well, you see, Commissioner, That's I... all, brother. Come on, Ugg Tug. Here's good news for all Fibber and Molly fans. How do you like to have an autographed picture of Fibber, McGee, and Molly and their cast? I have one right here, and I wish you could all see it. For a limited time only, you can have one free with your purchase of Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Glow Coat, or any Johnson's Wax polish in pint, pound, or larger sizes. Now, your dealer has a very limited supply of these free pictures. You'd better see them right away and avoid disappointment. Even if you already have some Glow Coat or Johnson's Wax on hand, now is a good time to buy an extra package so you and your family can enjoy this interesting autographed picture of Bibber and Molly and their cast. But don't put it off too long. Your dealer's supply of these pictures is really limited. Remember, this unique photograph is yours free with your purchase of Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, or any Johnson's Wax polish in pint, pound, or larger size. Well, they're a pretty cooperative bunch down at City Hall, Molly. <laughs> I'll give them credit for that. How cooperative. <laughs> They accepted my resignation as fire commissioner without a murmur. Well, that's nice, dearie. I always... Say, McGee. Huh? Your vest is all ripped down the front. How'd you do that? Oh, I must have done that when I took off my badge. You took it off? Well, all right, they took it off. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Paul. This is Marlowe Wilcox. Speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. It's fun to drive a new car, isn't it? And almost as much fun driving your car when it's been wax polished and looks like new. Then why not wax polish your car right away with Johnson's Car New, the sensational new auto polish that saves time and money. Why? Because Car New both cleans and wax polishes in one application, does two jobs at once. Get your car ready now for the bad weather coming. 
and ask your dealer for Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. This is Chicago WMAQ.